Hey guys, I was just getting caught up on my mail. Uh, let's see what we have today. Jury duty? Well, 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 this is preposterous. Wait a minute. With John Cusack? Well, what's he gonna pull this time? Runaway Jury, a forgotten legal thriller from the early 2000s starring John Cusack, Gene Hackman, Dustin Hoffman, Rachel Weisz, and Uncle Frank from Home Alone. Yeah, I may or may not have stumbled upon this movie watching an old season of Big Brother. Again, if you know, you know. And of course, after watching The Firm and A Few Good Men, I was intrigued greatly by this plot of Runaway Jury. I'd make videos about those other two movies, but a review of The Firm would probably turn into an hour-long video essay, and I don't want to give any more of my personal info to Bendini, Lambert, and Locke. But this movie is fresh in my mind, and it has a cast I thought only existed in my wildest dreams. And it's been a hot minute since I've done a movie review, so I figured it was the perfect opportunity to talk about this movie. The question is, does it top the firm? Now, for those new to the channel, how I do my, how I break down my movie reviews is I break it into three categories, the story, the characters, and the overall quality. So I basically rate the movie on a scale of one to five in those respective um, criteria, and then I come to some mathematical uh result at the end sometimes it's just simply uh what the score is out of 15 sometimes i take the average and make it out of five or i just give the percentage either way uh and so the story is just like how good the story is the characters is how good the characters are uh and overall quality being just all the things score cinematography writing etc so just let's get into that then <laughs> Let me start by saying Runaway Jury has probably the most jarring beginning to any movie I've seen, depicting the backstory of the plaintiff Celeste Wood, whose husband was brutally murdered at his workplace. That's right, this movie literally begins with a mass shooting. I mean, it's definitely a hook, but a pretty upsetting one at that. The funny thing is that I knew Dylan McDermott was going to die right away uh, anyways, because he wasn't featured in any of the trailers, so I just sort of put two and two together. Anyways, what ensues is a lawsuit between Celeste Wood, the widow, and the manufacturers who made the firearms used by the gunman. But because this is John Grisham, uh, made by John Grisham, I should say, written by John Grisham, there has to be a bizarre and legally unrealistic twist. This time, it's that the jury consultant Rankin Fitch, played by Gene Hackman, is crooked and is being paid by the gun company to not only handpick the jury so they would most likely vote in favor of the, def uh, the defendant, but al to also influence the jury uh, to ensure that they do so. This means that he did shady things like get certain jurors job promotions or, on the other side of things, blackmail certain jurors into voting that way. But in the middle of all of this is Nicholas Easter, John Cusack's character, a juror who is also playing the court case from the inside. Easter, along with his mysterious girlfriend Marley, are trying to play both sides. Marley asks both the plaintiff and the defendant for the same amount of money to swing the jury to their respective sides. But the more that Fitch's devious schemes come to light, the more inclined the two are to swing in favor of the widow. As the movie goes on, Fitch becomes obsessed with finding as much info as he can on Nick Easter and sends one of his lackeys on a wild goose chase all the way to his childhood hometown where he finds that Nick and Marley were both survivors of a school shooting. By this point, it becomes clear that Nick and Marley aren't just hustlers swinging the jury to the highest bidder, but that this was a plan to screw the case for Fitch and in the process end his career as he was also involved in the case that followed the school shooting when they were in high school. Sure enough, Easter is able to use his Sherlock Holmes and master manipulator skills to get the jury on his side, making a happy ending for pretty much everyone except for Fitch and the defendants. Now, this movie doesn't have the most clear and easy to understand story. I had a lot of questions watching it, most of them sprouting from my general lack of knowledge about law, but I'm here to say that that doesn't matter. We don't always have to be spoon-fed the story, and once you figure some things out in the movie, it becomes a lot easier to understand. That's the other thing. Some details, especially ones regarding Nick Easter and Marley, aren't revealed or explained until the end of the movie. Like, we had no idea that Nicholas Easter is an alias, or that they both knew each other in high school. Before that, their motives were unclear, and in the process, so was what they were trying to do. This choice in storytelling gave the movie a sort of suspenseful, noir-esque, whodunit feel to the movie, and now I want to rewatch it because I think this movie is a perfect example of a film that gets even better on the second view once you know what happens.
The way it begins and ends, it almost feels like it could be in a continuous loop. And for a legal thriller drama, that's a very unique and powerful way to tell a story. As for the story itself, it's a brilliant game of cat and mouse that, again, uniquely is built more on money and social manipulation than brute force and violence. At the same time, it doesn't skimp out on the development of the actual jury itself. I'll go more in depth in the character segment of this review, but I'll say here that the jury scenes reminded me a lot of 12 Angry Men. And for a movie that's not 100% about the jury, despite having jury in the title of the movie, we really get to know a lot about the jury, and that only adds to the charm of this movie. So I'm going to give, despite some of its, um, you know, confusing parts at the beginning, I'm going to give this story a, a 5 out of 5, because at the end, I was just kind of like, whoa, that's awesome. Like I already mentioned, the first thing that appealed to me about this movie was the cast. So my expectations for the characters were sky high, and I must admit that it far exceeded even that. I think that this is definitely John Cusack's best performance that I've seen him in, and uh, Nicholas Easter is definitely one of my favorite uh, Cusack characters, only rivaled by Vince Larkin in Con Air. As for Marley, she's a great character as well. Her and Easter work with each other really well, and watching the dual perspectives as they work on this case, both inside and outside the courtroom, respectfully, is really entertaining to watch. Even more, the fact that her their, their backstories are a mystery until the very end when Fitch's henchman does a little digging makes both of them just feel kind of cool. I don't think I've ever related to characters that I didn't know that much about before. It sort of gives me, like, Clint Eastwood Man With No Name vibes, except as Nick Easter was a double agent juror, so to speak, it would have been harder to keep him anonymous throughout the story anyways. Uh, Gene Hackman's Rankin Fitch is a perfect antagonist, a soulless mercenary willing to ruin some lives for $20 million. In a way, he's a pretty standard villain, but his roles and methods of getting what he wants are unique and have a sort of modern twist on them. The plaintiff attorney, Wendell Rohr, played by Dustin Hoffman, is it also a great foil to Fitch because he may be against Fitch in the courtroom and he may be a better person outside too, but Roar isn't a perfect person either. Throughout the movie, Roar's motivation for winning is questioned. Well, no crap, he's a lawyer. No matter what side he's on, he's getting paid to defend the plaintiff. And this sort of depicts Roar as the stereotypical sleazy lawyer. Even though he's portrayed as having the moral high ground to Fitch, which... It's not really hard to do. Roar still bites on the deal Marley makes with him, so he wasn't immune to corruption either. I think this is a nice touch because in most movies like these, the main protagonist is usually a lawyer and therefore has to be a good guy through and through, but Roar isn't the main character, so he doesn't have to be perfect. I also appreciated Jeremy Piven's role as the other jury consultant, who was sort of the young hotshot guy who sometimes maybe went a little bit too far to keep the odds in their favor. And now for the jury itself. As expected, we didn't get a super great who's who of the jury like we did in 12 Angry Men, because unlike 12 Angry Men, Runaway Jury isn't two hours of them fighting over a verdict in the same room. That being said, we got a good look at some of the jurors, even ones who didn't have great character development were still likable. For me, there's two jurors that stick out, uh, other than Nick, of course. The first one being Frank Herrera, the U.S. veteran who tried campaigning for Foreman at the beginning and spent the rest of the movie as a sort of soft antagonist to Easter. What I mean by this is that Herrera obviously wasn't a villain, but he was the only juror who was even remotely on to Easter's manipulation and proved to be the hardest juror to swing at the end. So, in a way, he was like the juror number three of this movie. Then there's also the jury foreman himself, Herman Grimes, the man who is verbally... The man, sorry, the man who verbally backhanded the judge for doubting his ability to be a juror just because he was blind. And yes, he's, per he's played by Jerry Bammon, the same guy who played Uncle Frank in all the Home Alone movies. His character stole all of the scenes. I don't know why. I, I, I just thought he was a cool character, and that seemed uh, and he, he seemed very wise and intelligent. So yeah, you could say the characters are extremely memorable, written exceptionally well, and uh, some of them have some of the best character developments I've ever seen in a movie. So again, I gotta give this movie, I gotta give the characters a five out of five. I mean, I yeah, I, you can't get much better than that when you already have such high expectations for the characters going into a movie and then they they just more than deliver now if i'm being honest the overall quality is probably the weakest aspect of this movie it's still far from bad it's just sort of meh compared to all the other great things this movie has going for it i mean the firm had done one had one of the best film scores i've ever heard runaway jury's score just doesn't stick out that well compared to it maybe i was too focused on the plot otherwise the score doesn't really do anything for the movie the writing i thought was excellent i mean movies like these tend to have really good writing in my opinion they're of a higher standard than your typical action blockbuster and 
same with the cinematography. Let's be honest. You're not going to hear anyone bring up Runaway Jury when they talk about beautiful looking movies. But that's the whole point of this movie. When you watch Runaway Jury, you're not coming for the cinematography or the earworm of a score. You're here for the complicated yet brilliant plot and the amazing characters. Uh, with all that in mind, this, this is just the perfect example of a movie that it's so hard to uh, evaluate the overall quality because you know, for the things that I just mentioned, I can't be too hard on it, but I also can't be too praising of it either because it doesn't really have a whole lot to offer. But I mean, it's, you know, it, it, there, there are so many other movies I can think of that are clearly like trying to have really good writing, have a beautiful score, have beautiful cinematography. And I can just tell that they, they weren't, they weren't, taking those elements they weren't using those elements as their selling point so because of that i just can't be too hard on that criteria so i ended up giving it a four out of five which is usually what i give for movies that kind of fit into that category so at the end of the day i rated runaway jury a 4.7 out of five or uh, or just a 14 out of 15 however you want it the math is all the same a nearly perfect movie sure it wasn't as good as the firm but that's like saying that Aaron Rodgers isn't as good of a quarterback as Tom Brady. I highly recommend this movie if you like crime mysteries and legal dramas. It has a really interesting take on that whole genre. Um, yeah, so that's going to wrap it up for this video. Um, uh, please comment below if there's any movies you would like me to review because I honestly love doing these movie reviews. I love writing these movie reviews. I'd like to do that more. As a matter of fact, the next video I plan on uploading is not actually one movie review, but it's actually... 10 movie reviews in one video. Uh, if you recall, gosh, it was almost like three years ago now, I did a video ranking the best picture winning movies from the 1920s and 1930s. Uh, the next video, I'm doing that now for the 1940s because I finally have all those watched and have all those written out. And then pretty soon I might actually have one for the 50s too because I kind of picked up the pace with watching the best picture winners. But yeah, be on the lookout for the 1940s best picture winners ranked video and I'll just see you next time. See ya.